This is a Mamiya Universal press camera. It's a very unique, weirdly shaped, modular medium format film camera that can shoot not only six by seven, but it can also shoot six by nine if you have the applicable back. And it can also shoot peel apart Polaroid pack film, which a lot of medium format film cameras can shoot. But this one is special because it can shoot the entire frame of peel apart pack film with very sharp lenses. I've been wanting to shoot this box of Fuji FP3000B black and white peel apart pack film for a very long time. It looks like each box of this film is going for, at the cheapest, about $90. Wow, okay. If you're familiar with my work at all, I love shooting conceptual black and white portraiture in the studio. Hopefully this FP3000B has not dried up and it is completely usable still but we will find that out as soon as we get to the studio and start shooting. All right, so the $90 FP3000, this expired in 2014, so it's actually pretty new. I feel so blessed to be able to finally have a reason to shoot this film. Thank you, Mika. All right, so this is the moment of truth. I'm gonna pull this out, and then a little white tab should come out that says one on it. It didn't work, okay. Uh, let me go into the restroom. Okay, wait, I got it. <laughs> yes, dude! I'm the greatest to ever do it. I got it, so I was able to open it up in the dark, pull it out, and so that's tab one. We almost lost all 10 frames, but I think we have all of them to use today, so. Let's uh, shoot some photos. This is beautiful, I love your outfit. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm shooting with my friend Mika, who is just a pleasure to shoot with. I'll link to our other video where we shoot a bunch of awesome portraits in the studio as well. I'm just gonna set up these lights really quick. Oh, this is so cute already. I fixed the focusing system, so if none of this shit isn't focused, it's my fault. I bought it just for this shoot, just to shoot this pack of film with you. I would do anything for you. Isn't it so awkward looking? All right, we'll try this first shot at 500. So it'll be white background, silhouette, your face will be illuminated though, if we do this correct. Well, if I do this correct. Yeah, right there. Three, two, one. That's it. Uh, camera comes off, dark slide goes back in. 15 seconds, it only takes 15 seconds to develop, so. You have to take it out after. There we go. Okay, well that's completely out of focus. It looks like it's back focused entirely. First photo, completely out of focus. I, I calibrated this myself, but the lens is retractable to make it a little bit more compact and I never opened it up, which is, that's a, that's a large amount of space in terms of focusing there. Let's try that again. Let's just try that photo again, right? That was also good though, because there are some things that I really don't want in the shot. Like I don't want the curtain in the background. It was beautiful though, it looks really cool. You ready? Three, two, one. Take the camera off, dark slide goes back in. At least the, the back works and we didn't even, I didn't even mess up the first frame. That's pretty awesome. 15, 14, five, four. You wanna pull this one? Okay, two. I'm gonna make you do one, so watch. So what you can do is you can rip it like this, and then all you do is just peel from a corner. And we've got perfect focus. It's in focus, right? Yeah. Let's go. I actually fixed something and it worked. Wow, Mika, we're iconic. <laughs> Shall we continue? Yes. Let's get even crazier now that I know the focus works. I'm so grateful that the lens being retracted was our issue with focus. I actually calibrated the rangefinder properly and we have a beautiful second frame that actually looks really good. Look this way a little bit, tilt your head. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> with your head like, pull up. yeah, right back. Right there. Three, two, one. Okay. 
15, 14. Dope. Definitely out of focus. So cool. Buddy. Really cool. Yeah, just, yeah, perfect. Just like that, ready? Three, two, one. Beautiful, gorgeous. Fifteen, fourteen. You're gonna peel this one. Thirteen, <laughs> twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Just peel from that corner. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Both this shot and the last shot, I really, really like. They are a little out of focus. And I'm not sure if that's because the rangefinder is slightly uncalibrated or if it's just me learning the subtle focus changes between focusing on someone's face and then framing the shot. Mika's outfit had an open back to it. This made me start to think about the spinal cord and how beautiful like the human bone structure is. So I created a bunch of circles that could go up Mika's back, reflecting or mimicking a spine. This spine is just a bunch of circles that I made in Photoshop and are being projected directly onto Mika's back in Photoshop in real time. and just arms straight up in the air <laughs> and bring them back down and just stay like perfectly straight like that and then bring your arms back. Three, two, one. I think it's a kind of cool idea. You see that? I can, I can, we can go deeper though. How many do we have? We have five left. See what I'm doing, Marty? I like just change the perspective. Ooh, hold on. I'm, I'm warping it right now, Mika. I wanted to take our spine idea a little further, so I warped it to Mika's back to shoot it from a completely different perspective. Three, two, one. Yeah, that's cool. Three, two, one. 15, 14. Oh, wow. Wow. That is sick. That's gorgeous. That's hard. Dude, that's <laughs> that's... <laughs> Let's go. That's the best one so far. You think? I think so. You're a hater. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You can really see the progression like of us figuring yeah. it out. Like first one we had the the lines on the back and that one's just like okay. Like it's it's good, but it's like we're still trying to figure out the idea. And then this one's really far away and you're framed really cool. But then this one is like framed so nice, you're looking right at the camera. It's got like a nice curve. The the spine thing's like really oh it's so sick. Next order of business was to try a quadruple exposure, and I'll just let you see how it unfolds. <laughs> right there, three, two, one, don't blink. Got it, first shot done. All right, three, two, one, don't blink. Three, two, one. Get ready for disaster. Eight, seven, six, one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't win them all. I really thought I was onto something. This is the only time I changed my metering. If you look to the left of Mika's head, there's that blob. That's all three of the exposures that were supposed to be of Mika's eye. I never promised I was gonna take any good photos, so <laughs> this is okay. One last frame. 
we decided to completely change the look for the last shot to this projected square that lines up perfectly with the square box's edge. Three, two, one. Boom. Last one. Perfect. Cool. That's beautiful. Cool. Oh, it smells what? so bad. Wow. Thank you, Mika. You're the greatest. I'm so glad you came. A big step up from the last one, I think. You think so? I think so. I'm always up in the studio shooting film, but I have never shot instant film or Polaroid film in the studio like this before. Having a camera with fully manual controls, a nice lens, paired with this beautiful 3000 speed instant film, was just like a great mixture for a great day in the studio. I felt like the gratification of being able to peel apart the film and see the images in real time, like really informed what I wanted to shoot next. And I found that really fun. I wish they still produced this film. I wish that it was a more accessible thing for more photographers. There's a reason I held onto this film for a year and a half. It was $90 for a pack for 10 photos. Luckily, I think we made pretty good use of about eight of those frames and I'm really stoked on how these turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys for another video at some point, I'm sure. See ya.